to talk a little bit about horror in anime, partly because actually somebody on the chat room some time ago um, talked to me offline about being a fan of horror and remarking about how little horror there is in anime. And we're talking not just hor horror concepts, not just you know a horror episode or whatever, but true you know Halloween psycho style horror, Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street kind of thing. And that struck me the more I thought about it. Because at first I was like, wait, yeah, there's lots of horror anime. There's this and, and, huh. And I'm trying to figure out why. Because horror seems like it would be an easy enough thing to adapt into anime, right? You can show as much blood as you want. You can dismember people as much as you want. Um, they're not real. And it is a visual style. It's an artistic, it's a thing easy to adapt into art. And it has this easy, um, you know, visceral thrill. People enjoy getting that that thrill out of stuff. And if you want to uh, connect to your audience, horror is a great way of doing it. Um, and horror tends to be horror. Good horror can be expensive because of special effects. But technically, everything's a special effect in anime uh, and animation in general. So why isn't there much horror? Um, Carmadillo makes a great point in the chat room that uh, horror anime is often diluted by the action tendencies prevalent in the medium. So, and that's also a thing I think in live action horror as well, where it often gets diluted by turning it basically into a thriller series often, you know, where a horror movie is really more a thriller. Um, it's more about um, uh, the build-up um, as opposed to, or, or not just the build-up, but it, it's more about uncovering what's going on as opposed to the horror and that's kind of weird um and yeah and that's the thing matt is is i would think jump scares would be easy in anime but even that we don't get much of which is weird um that's a great point cephalopod horror works best in in short stories not just in the literature literary sense but in you know, short self-contained stories it's hard to do a long-run horror series you're right so you could do um, an anthology series. I think Ghost Stories is a good example of a horror series, not the English joke dub, much as I love that. Um, but that is definitely a horror series told over the course of time. Um, yeah, Junji Ito, you know, he, he does, he's famous for his horror because he does self-contained stories. But like, I look at Ghost Stories and I think, well, you have a haunted schoolhouse and you have all these monsters around. Couldn't you do a Monster of the Week as an anime series? I mean, you'd think there are concepts you could that you could uh, follow up on. Think, you know, Natsume's Book of Friends, but horror. Um, especially with Japanese yokai. Um, and that actually goes back, you know, you have Gege no Kitaro, who was, it, it was a horror, but that was a horror shonen series. And I think it gets back to Kamadillo's point, where Kitaro is, and was traditionally, um, horror action. Right, because it was a shonen title, you had to have the character using powers and fighting off things, and so it it tended to make the the horror was definitely horrible in that, but there was much there was less there were fewer pages of horror, if you will, in Kitaro than you would have in a, in a standard horror work. Um, I'm also intrigued. I wonder how much horror there is in manga. It feels to me like there's a fair amount of horror manga. Um, you know, I'm thinking of Kurosaki Corpse Delivery Service. Um, oh, what's the other one um, that everyone loves and I hate? Um, I don't know. But there are certainly a lot of, you know, there seems to be a fair number of horror manga. Um, now, that's an interesting point, Matt, is that you get, you, you, we do get a fair amount of horror sequences in anime. So traditionally, you know, you know a, a shonen series will have a horrific scene or a horrific episode, uh, which is definitely cool. Yeah, definitely. I absolutely right, Carmen Dillo. You know, um, uh, the Akira manga has a lot of horror sequences. Um, you know, a few in the anime, but certainly more in the, in, in the manga. Um, so yeah, but those don't get it, seem to get adapted. I think now part of that certainly is that anime is aimed at a different a different target audience, right? I think you can 
you can have more horror anime or you can have more horror manga because you can have a man a manga magazine with a smaller circulation you know just for the horror fans but if you want to adapt into anime you're spending you know millions of dollars and so it's harder to you know, justify that necessarily um yeah I, I would say monster is horror in kind of the more the halloween original halloween movie sense um where you know it's 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 definitely horror it's just not jump scares it's not you know a grotesque creature uh 20th century boys i would say is horror certainly has a horror you know that is, that is certainly a genre that i would apply to it um, among others um I'd, I'd say naki urasawa you know, does horror quite a bit at some point you know in in some elements of his stories um yeah parasite I would argue. I think Ergo Proxy has its horror moments. Lane. You know, Serial Experiments Lane. Famously, Kanaka said that uh, he structured that as a horror series. It is not a horror series in terms of its you know, fundamental genre, but it is... I think it, it definitely has horror moments. Mm. Yeah, body horror, body horror can get to me. Now, this is another thing. Is I was realizing this recently. You also look back in the past, and in the 80s we had all of that body horror hentai and quasi-hentai stuff like Legend of the Overfiend and um, um, uh, the one that I talked about a couple weeks ago, um, which is I'm completely forgetting, uh, Wicked City. Um, I was just, just watching Doom Megalopolis. That's absolutely horror. Um, and you had a lot of those weird horror, etchy, hentai things. Demon City Shinjuku, Ninja Scroll. Definitely horror. But it seems to have have faded to some extent. Elfin Lead, definitely. Or Elfin Lied, I don't know. I've heard it both ways. So they're certainly out there. And I, certainly Elfin Lead is in the Akira mode, where it's sort of action horror um, in that sense. Where it's it's weird it's sort of weird, quasi body horror. Well, it's done, certainly some body horror. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the other complexity, which is just a cultural thing. So, for example, in so in Japan, horror um, um, haunted houses are a fixture at amusement parks. Every amusement park will have a walk through haunted house sequence because being afraid is meant to cool you off. You know, it is meant to give you a thrill um, and it's meant to kind of be freaky for a moment. But it, it is more on the visceral thrill than it is about, you know, um, unsettling you to the core, if you will, if that makes sense. So that is, I think, also just a different cultural thing. Um, and you're right, Kenshin. You know, one of the, the issues is that it's always harder for animation to go psychological um, because we can't see all of the details of a person's face. You know, we can we can invest more directly in a a shot of a worried character um, that is live action will invest us more than the shot of a worried animated character when we haven't seen either before. You know, just a stranger who is worried gets to us, you know, gets to our heart more than an animated character um, because we are, we are looking at all those different bits of the face and we, we kind of, you know, we're wired for that. Um, so it, 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 is, it takes a little more work to build up that psychological identification with a character, which can then give you the horror. Um, but physical horror, you know, body horror, limbs flying, I think is, is definitely easier in anime, which I think is, is less commercialized, commercializable, right? I think it's a good point that it's, it's harder to make money off of a bloody, gory mess in general, uh, than it is Naruto, right? Or, uh, or Bleach or Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I think it's a really good point. I think horror is is not it, it's hard it's hard to commercialize, and it is 
it's just it has a relatively small audience. That's that's one of the things that I think a lot of horror fans have a difficult time grappling with is that they love horror and it's hard for them to imagine that horror turns a lot of people off and it, it's true. Um, uh, that's a good point, Matt, that, um, who says, what I like about horror is when they feature the unpredictability of the human mind. Um, yeah, that whole Perfect Blue, I think, is a great example of that, where it's all about what you perceive and the question of whether, whether that perception is accurate or not. And how can you tell the difference? Uh, that's that's complicated. Um, that, that's hard to pull off. And you, you need to spend time establishing a character and sort of walking with the character for a long time. Um, um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, um, you know, it's one of the weird things. Is I think horror fits animation particularly well. Especially when you're dealing with um, things that are not not normal, you know. One of the problems with, say, doing something like the original movie Halloween is a great example, where there are no creatures in that film. It's a guy in a ho hockey mask, which means it's very cheap to make live action. But with animation, you're animating all that just as much as if th those were monsters. So it's like, you know, th that isn't as effective as a, um, for, a, for the animation medium, as would something with weird monsters. On the other hand, I was just watching a movie called Gyo, uh, which is made, I don't know, in the past five or ten years. It's about fish that grow legs and come on land and try to kill people. And it's this, this you know, basically a zombie apocalypse of fish with legs. And it's just, once it, it is horrific, the first one or two times you see it, you know, a shark with, like, spider legs coming at you. But then, once the mind, you know gets over that initial shock, you think, a shark with spider legs? Really? And it just becomes ridiculous and absurd. Um, and so that's also the difficulty, too, is that trying to find that balance between truly horrific and just weird monster of the week. Um... <clears throat> I don't think it's about making people people um, worried or uncomfortable. I think it's more of a, of a social thing. You don't want to make somebody uncomfortable, you know, face to face. But in a in a movie or TV show, that's fine. Um, I think that that's more. Um, yeah, that's that's interpersonal, cultural. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the, the other issue. Like, like you guys are saying, I love horror when it's psychological. Um, when it's about perception and not just what's real and what, what isn't real, but about is this dangerous or not? Um, you know, knowing something that other people don't know and trying to decide if that is actu actually accurate and how accurate it is, how true it might be. Um... I think that's when horror kind of gets to me because we're, we're delving into those things. And that's something that's just not suited to animation particularly well. Um, right, exactly, uh, Cephalopod. You know, horror is about the emotion it's trying to provoke. So it's, it, it's complicated. Um, what is Uzumaki? I'm not familiar with that. Um, I haven't heard of that anyway. Um... The yeah, and you get because there there is horror and there are horror sequences and horror aspects in lots of different things, but it isn't necessarily it isn't necessarily a horror show or a horror movie. Um, that's that's where things get weird, right? Um, and I think it's one of the reasons why we see you know I, I think it's that horror is we don't see a lot of horror series because that can be woven in it as an emotion. You can be horrified by something. Um, stuff like, um, I don't remember, um, well, you know, depending on how you look at it, you know, there, there is a horrific sequence in Gundam Seed Destiny. Um, not because it's a monster, but because if people, somebody does something and you're like, you did it, right? Um, ah, Bokorano, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, there's there we go. Um, well, I think uh, Carmadale. I think that you know, the slice of life horror has been sort of, sort of buttoned up by when they cry. Uh, for some reason, Higurashi grabbed onto that, and no one else wants to touch it because I think anyone who does that now, well, school days as well. I think school days and Higurashi did that, and everyone's like, "Well, we're done." Like, if we try to do that now, we're just going to be copycats of that, and no one will, uh, no one will agree, or n no one will w will watch it because they're just they'll just believe that we're copying Higurashi, I guess. Um, yeah, Hell Girl, yeah, and you've also got that. I mean, granted, there are a lot of creepy anime that's not necessarily horror. Where there's just weird things going on, Lane. Um, I'd say Boogie Pop Phantom is horror, um, but it, it is also more of a sort of a coming of age story, um, besides just being horror. Yeah, I'm just looking up at my my list of my shelves of manga here to see if I can uh, uh, think of a manga that really um, fits that. Um, oh yeah. Um, oh, um, Lament of the Lamb is a manga I have. It's about vampires. But it's sort of, I mean, it's not really slice of life vampires, but it's, okay, you have what's effectively a disease. You have to drink blood. What do you do? How do you live with this thing? And so it has horrific consequences and horrific potentialities in it in terms of what you can do with that. But it is much more of a, a story of day-to-day -day living with the consequences of this, of this particular aspect of your life. And trying to struggle with that, so it's a little more angsty, right? Than it is horror. So it is. It, it is. It's interesting. I think it's, that's also it gets back to what we were saying before. That I think there's less horror anime, but there's a lot of anime that has horror in it, um, and it trades on horror. And I think that's what it's going to have to be. I, I think it's just not going to be as big of a deal. And I think also partly, you know, Japan just did not have a horror boom in terms of animation, the way we did. Obviously, they had a, a live-action movie horror boom. But I think one of the reasons we have a horror genre over here, so to speak, is because, you know, Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street and all those movies of the, the 70s took off and went nuts. Uh, and so there were just hundreds and hundreds of copies of those uh, because they were so successful and because even the copies made money. So... You know, I, I think there's just there there is no equivalent to that in Japan, um, but there's just always been horror being done. The Drifting Classroom, great example of definitely a horror manga from back in the day. It was hugely successful, but you know there was no anime of it, of it right? Because it was just too too graphic and gory and, and and too too extreme, really, for the mainstream. And that said, in that sense, just as, like there's no Barefoot Gen TV series. <laughs> a couple of movies, but that's not a thing you're going to make a TV series of, probably. So, yeah, Blood of the Last Vampire, the Blood franchise, definitely horror. Yeah. Interesting. All right, thank you guys very much for that discussion. That was very helpful. And we will be back with more discussions later on.